I am going to take you on a tour of some of the previous artworks from the Folkestone Triennials that have gone by. There are 84 artworks in a permanent collection by 44 artists from all across the world and we're going to just sample a few of those. The first piece of artwork up is by Yoko Ono called Earth Piece. This is part of the 2014 Triennial. Projected from the top of the ground over the channel towards France is a light beam transmitting the statement Earth Peace in Morse code. This statement also appears carved into a stone just across the way, acting as a permanent memorial to those that have died for peace over the centuries. The second piece up is Spencer Finch. He created a blue hued colour wheel which has a really impressionistic style about it. You match up the different hues of blue with the little viewfinders on each side to, to match alongside what you see in the sea. And it really kind of reflects the ever-changing colors of the ocean. Pablo Bronstein describes his beach hut as being quintessentially English and really inspired by Baroque architecture. And in the 18th century, the, the use of this heroic style was chosen deliberately for lighthouses along the southeast coast, and so he really pays homage to this by having that long kind of neck and that the, this will kind of nod to it being very similar to a lighthouse. Next up is Bill Woodrow, the Lech. This artist is really interested in climate change, the effect of people who are on the front line at the edge of the change, and he really talks in this piece particularly about the disappearance of polar ice caps and um, an iceberg melting into a pool of oil. Richard Wilson's golf-inspired beach huts were actually part of the amusement park that was at Folkestone and so he used part of the old golf, golf course and the cement and the um, part of the fittings to actually recreate the style of these, these beach huts that happened to sit next door to existing beach huts in Folkestone. This piece of artwork, Jelly Mould Pavilion by Le Buana Hamid is a really large scale piece that again is quite interactive because people can actually go and sit and enjoy the view and really fits well within its surroundings. There's a real nod to the black community recalling the slave trade and sugar plantations and the artist is really interested in adding her own painted pattern decorations. When you're sitting inside the piece you can really, if you look up, you can really see beautiful um, African inspired patterns on the inside of the piece as well. This massive piece by A.K. Dolvin is a disused bell that had been recalled from a church in Leicestershire because it wasn't in tune from the others. And so there's this idea of it being at odds with one's surroundings. And also it's just quite interesting because um, if it's windy enough and there's enough of um, enough wind speed, then the bell actually rings. And so there's, there's this idea of it really interacting with its surroundings. This piece by Sol Calero is super bright, really fresh, it looks fantastic in, um, in its surroundings and it's very much um, about culture, cultural differences. She's a Venezuelan artist and she's really intrigued by cultural stereotypes and she's very much driven by this sense of people considering their differences and breaking through stereotypes um, to, to just break down boundaries. And, and also just to create space that is really exciting and is a really lovely place for people to spend time. Paloma Varga Weiss's five-headed sculpture is wrapped in blankets and cardboard and there's this idea of these people being stranded and I really like how they're kind of wrapped up, huddled together, they all have completely different emotions and if you walk around you can really see the differences in the way that they're feeling and the mood that they create as well so it's quite an interesting one in, t in terms of trying to just make your own mind up about the piece and think about who are these people and and what is it that they're thinking. Anthony Gormley's figurative sculptures another time these are a series of 100 solid cast iron figures that he lent three out to Folkestone so this is one of the pieces that is underneath the harbour arm and he's really interested in this idea of space and time and the tide kind of coming in and splashing against the sculpture and the stillness and silent na nature of the sculpture itself. So the work was really designed to be placed within this kind of ebb and flow of the water coming in and out. 
these massive letters that spell out Folkestone are created by Patrick Tatuago and he's really inspired by the Orient Express which actually still pulls in weekly at Folkestone and two of his collaborators reenacted the classic journey from Istanbul to Paris and Folkestone and so this this large sculpture that he has on the harbour arm that can be seen from any po point of Folkestone or many parts from Folkestone were really chanced upon by social situations and people that he met along the way and so he's really interested in how people interact with each other, groups they form and behaviours that people follow um, and beyond that as well it's just a really brilliant piece of artwork that um, really gives folks in a sense of identity and that real vibrancy and fun and colour really shines through. Richard Woods created a series of six brightly coloured small homes that were located across different parts of Folkestone. Two of these remain, there's a bright orange one that is at the end of the harbour and another one that sits on top of the harbour and floats on the water. These are really representative of the housing crisis and this booming market in second homes and this, the fact that it represents a crisis of not, not just housing supply but of economic inequality and he really played on these ideas. This piece by Michael Craig Martin is so iconic, it really sits in such an important part of Folkestone. So the Folkestone light bulb stands over the junction of the two really important streets in Folkestone's old town, so the old High Street and Tontine Street, and it really creates an energy and a buzz about the creative quarter. And it really alludes to this idea of the regeneration and how there were real changes happening in Folkestone, and it's just really expressive, really bright, really bold and very energetic. Sarah Staten really wanted to create something that was a people-friendly sculpture and I think her, her sculptures that sit at the harbour really are that. They are something that people can enjoy and they can sit on the benches and use the table and it is something that really has become part of its landscape. Cornelia Parker's Mermaid sits on Sunny Sands Beach and has become a real tourist attraction for Folkestone. What I really like about this piece is that Parker chose um, a local, so a mother of two, to sit and to model for the mermaid. And so it is a life-size cast sculpture of somebody who really lived in Folkestone at the time. And her mermaid is someone who shows quite a lot of confidence, really kind of knowing person that's really looking out to sea and is a beautiful permanent fixture for Folkestone. One of my favourites from the previous triennials is this piece, The Siren, which sits right up near the Warren. And it is very much about communication and picking up sounds from around the ocean. And so it really reminds me of like a, a seashell and, and the idea is that it picks up the sounds from the ocean and communicates these sounds back out again. So there's this really kind of interactive element to the piece um, where you can blow through the end of it and the idea is that these sounds are transmitted across the sea. Tracy Emmons art is scattered across Folkestone, so these ceramic pieces of discarded baby items that have been inspired from her own personal life and they are really tucked away, hidden underneath benches in very non-obvious places that you really have to look for, hanging from railings, lying on a curb. And they really kind of exude this aura of um, dejection and things just being discarded. Um, and, and they also are a gentle reminder of Folkestone's high teenage pregnancy rate, which she said is very similar to that of Margate, where she grew up herself. Christian Boltanski has a series of four benches all along the Lees and they are sound installations so the sound is triggered when visitors sit down and the voices are reading letters to and from the servicemen of the First World War. Here there are 19,240 beach pebbles collected and laid out into a massive square which represents the exact number of British soldiers killed on July the 1st 1916 at the first day of the song. These are by Mark Wallinger and the work is really inspired by the one million soldiers who left from Folkestone Harbour to fight at the battlefields of France and Flanders. I hope you've enjoyed learning about some of the artists' work at previous triennials and if you want to learn a little bit more or hear anything about the next Folkestone Triennial that is coming up which is going to be called The Plot then head over to the Creative Foundation website to find out more. <laughs>